There are only so many car chase movies that can fit into just 10 slots. Some are more memorable than others, but can sometimes be only remembered for either one reason or another, or are sometimes misplaced in people's memories, or for the vast majority of moviegoers, never heard of before. MFP presents 10 more forgotten car chase movies. A somewhat dark tale from the early 1970s starring a young Charlotte Rampling and Robert Blake playing the lead role of Corky Curtis, who is a stock car racer circuit wannabe, who finds through his talent on the streets drag racing, he feels he has the potential to make it as a professional driver, yet seems to be the victim of his own bad luck and blind ambition. His antics soon land him in trouble and out of a job after almost costing another driver his life, as he then takes to the streets and abandons his family to try and make his dreams come true. Seen driving in a souped up 1969, some say 67, Plymouth Barracuda, this would be the first year this model would come with the famous 440 Super Commando, producing 375 horsepower. Said to be a George Barris custom, the Barracuda is seen slowly falling apart throughout the film, reflecting its owner's deterioration as he is becoming more and more a victim of his own failures and poor life decisions. With the number of racing and dragging scenes present showcasing cars such as a 1964 Chevrolet Chevelle Malibu and a 1963 Ford Galaxy 500, Corky plays as a story of irresponsibility and how some people are the cause of their own failures in life. Originally titled Looking Good, the film was changed along with its title by one of the heads of MGM against the protests of producer Bruce Geller, to the point of Geller wanting to have his credit removed from the project. Received with mixed reviews, Corky left just as quickly as it arrived and was said to have not even been given a VHS release, yet eventually found its way to DVD and has since been given more recognition upon its release. The ultimate hero, driving the last car on earth in a fight for survival. A 1981 sci-fi set in 2011, starring the six million dollar man Lee Majors, which came out around the same time he was about to star in his new series The Fall Guy. The last race takes place in a post-pandemic dystopian future, where a viral illness has wiped out a number of the population, fuel is no longer available, and motor transportation has been all but gone over the last 20 years or so. Playing ex-race driver Franklin Hart who lost his family, Majors now works as a spokesperson for the government on how much better the world is now that private motorized transportation is gone until he eventually breaks rank at a school assembly and argues for the world he once knew. Set for re-education for his misdeeds, Hart unearths from his concrete floor garage some contraband in a scene that seems the John Wick series may have taken inspiration from in the form of a disassembled 1971-72 Porsche 91710 Cam Am Spider replica built for the film. Said to have been replicated into three copies of undetermined engine capacities on the once again custom car typical VW chassis, the original 917 Porsche was said to be a 5 litre twin turbo engine that produced 838 brake horsepower and a top speed of 220 miles per hour and able to achieve 0 to 100 miles per hour in 2.9 seconds. Deciding to go cross country with a young companion he inspired through his speech, who wanted to join him in his escape, Majors races to get to California as it is now seen as a separate nation and welcoming those who would challenge government tyranny. This in turn forces those in pursuit of Majors to send a veteran fighter pilot, played by Burgess Meredith, to hunt down and stop the Porsche in a museum stored F86 Sabre, as there is no other means to catch the 917. Though not well received as a number of films on these lists when first released, the message of freedom of motor expression is one that still resonates even to this day. The Last Chase. I'm Ron Howard. This is Grand Theft Auto. Though only sharing its title with the popular video game series and nothing much else, Grand Theft Auto is now in the history books as being famed director Ron Howard's feature film directorial debut. Making a deal with legendary B-movie producer Roger Corman to star in his films if he was allowed to direct one, which was made after signing on to star in the previous car chase outing, Eat My Dust, Ron Howard would return once more in this 1977 car chase follow-up. Looking to marry his sweetheart, Howard's character Sam Freeman is rejected by her wealthy parents as they have promised their daughter to another man and assume Sam is only interested in his girlfriend Paula, played by Nancy Morgan's money. After Sam is thrown out by her parents, Nancy steals her father's 1959 Rolls Royce Silver Cloud to elope with Sam to go to Las Vegas to get married. Equipped with a 4.9 litre straight 6 engine, producing 178 brake horsepower and a top speed of 171 km per hour or 106 miles per hour, it was said two Rolls Royces were used for the production of the film, where one was said to be the genuine article, while the other was a Rolls Royce body set on a Chevy truck frame with a racing engine set within it. Once a bounty is placed for the safe return of Paula in her father's car, an array of road carnage ensues where the likes of cars such as a 1969 Porsche 911, a 1968 Dodge Charger, a demolished by Paula's arranged by her family suitor, trying to catch the couple along with many others giving chase. Co-written with his father Rance Howard, Ron shot Grand Theft Auto in just 15 days and with few to no highway permits. 
The film proved to be another hit for Corman, bringing in over $15 million on a $600,000 budget and would lead to an impressive directing career in Hollywood for Howard, still going strong over 45 years later. Look out, Vegas. We're coming in. A 1985 New Zealand production starring a then 60-year-old Cliff Robinson playing a down-on-his-luck American stunt race car driver, trying to make a buck while in New Zealand with his young mechanic. Shaker Run tells the story of a scientist who hires Robertson's character to unknowingly transport secret stolen medical research pertaining to an accidental discovery of a lethal bioagent the military are interested in getting their hands on to weaponize. With the star of the film appearing to be a 1980 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, it was in fact a right-hand drive fiberglass replica kit car built on an Australian Holden HQ chassis. Built by Tom Morland, the car is shown to have a 350 Chevy V8 and was capable of producing 275 brake horsepower, unlike its original US-based appearance Trans Am, which at the time had 210 horsepower being produced from a 4.9 litre engine. Featuring chases against several black Holden 1979 VB Commodores, and then later a race car custom 1973 Ford Capri Mark I built by Brent Boulevard, said in the film to also have a 350 Chevy engine before it was stolen for use from a car dealership in Wellington City. A cliff-top chase soon after the introduction of the Capri takes place, as the film displays some wonderful rural New Zealand scenery throughout, with an impressive helicopter stunt being executed come the film's climax. Little is known of the film's budget or box office, as it quietly made its way on and off the screen after its 1985 release. Still devoid of an HD transfer, as copies available of the film are lifted mostly from VHS and Laserdisc format, Shaker Run does have its followers and fans, who cite this film often as a forgotten 80s car chase gem that more people should take viewing of to enjoy what it set out to accomplish. about a whole bunch of folks getting together for a whole lot of fun. Another of the moonshine films of the 1970s that was still proving popular even towards the end of the decade, Moonrunners came out in 1975 and would come to be the inspiration for the 1980s popular TV series The Dukes of Hazard. Featuring the exploits of cousins Bobby Lee and Grady Hagg, played by Kiel Martin and James Mitchum, Moonrunners was inspired by the life of bootlegger and later stock car racer Jerry Rushing and several individuals in his life who were used as the basis for a number of characters, both in this film and later in the Duke's TV series. Seen throughout showcasing a number of car chases and vehicles, one of which being first shown driven by Bobby Lee, is an orange 1971 Chevrolet Biscayne, similar to that of a 71 Bel Air, with one of its biggest engine options being a 7.4 litre hydromatic V8, producing 289 horsepower, and later seen in a 1970-71 Plymouth Fury, carrying a 440 V8 as its highest engine option. Played on a more serious tone with less comedy and family friendliness than the mentioned TV series, but still retaining a balladeer narrator, voiced again by Waylon Jennings, Moonrunners would tell the tale of a family of moonshine bootleggers and their rivalry within their small southern town. Another case of Lost in Time, Moonrunners may indeed be one of the harder films to find on this list, as it was never released officially on any format, including DVD or even VHS. There are fan-made DVD-R copies circulating around, originating from the UK of all places, as this film is indeed an almost totally forgotten piece of history. Al Dremente Ci Arrabbiamo, or as it is known in the West, Watch Out We're Mad, with the famous Italian duo Bud Spencer and Terence Hill teaming up once more for this 1974 slapstick comedy, is a film where if the word bonkers was used to describe some of the racing and driving scenes from it, it would not be misleading. It should come as no surprise that a film about two racing competitors is stuck with the dilemma of who should own the first prize of a race both won. That being of a popular at the time, VW Beetle chassis, converted with a fiberglass body into a dune buggy, the film begins with the race slash rally slash demolition derby consisting of 1973 Ford Escort MK1s and 1969 Capris supplied by Ford Italia, which is thought the Escorts given were powered by stock 1.3 litre four cylinder engines and possibly in the GT option range, carrying 82 horsepower to play out this scene. The story evolves into one of payback and retribution as both men see their prize destroyed by a mafia gang after refusing to exit their vehicle while leaving a local fairground where both men were undertaking a beer and hot dog contest to see who would take home the first prize. With the then slapstick comedy these two bring into their films showcased throughout, after a close friend is beaten, both men decide to visit the Mafia boss at his restaurant. After being refused entry at the door, Spencer accompanied with Hill, drives his rally car right into the building, creating nothing short of chaos as the lightweight nimble escort is seen driving up and down staircases and in and out of the kitchen, narrowly avoiding running over anybody as they dive out of the duo's way. The entire scene was shot practically, and with the typical 70s Italian filming method of just shoot it for real attitude, this scene and movie remains a fun little offbeat moment in European cinema history. Next, 
Not being of 100% certain if it is considered the third installment or not anymore, Speed Zone, or as it is also known, Cannonball Fever, is thought to be the final chapter of the Burt Reynolds famed Cannonball Run films of the 1980s. Part of the confusion comes from seeing one of the main characters of The Sheik, played by Jamie Farr, reprising his role from the first two films, and then seeing one of the main characters here watching the original 81 movie on a television screen, making this an almost meta film on its own. Following the basic premise of the first two films, and opening with its signature Lamborghini police chase, this time featuring a red 1985 Countach 5000QV 5.2 litre V12 producing 449 brake horsepower, it has been said to be a replica of unknown origin. Cannonball Fever was a joint feature, and filmed in both Canada and the US, consisting of a number of well-known at the time Canadian actors and comedians, such as Eugene Levy and John Candy. Cannonball Fever was originally supposed to have star Burt Reynolds return once more to reprise his role, who it is said turned down a substantial paycheck to do so. The film was to be a massive failure at the box office, budgeted at $18 million to produce, and only generating $3 million worldwide. With some well-shot chase sequences, and several amazing sports cars added to its lineup, one of which was a replica 1971 Ferrari 365 GTS Daytona Spider, built in a Corvette chassis, which had originally been used in the 80s hit TV show Miami Vice, that was ordered by Ferrari to be destroyed, and no longer allowed to be used in the TV series. One of the film's more memorable scenes involved seeing the Countach skip its way across a small river. The idea of if a car could indeed skip across a massive water the way it was shown in the film was tested on the Mythbusters TV series in 2009, where it was found to be plausible and performed with succession on the show. It makes you feel like a star, and if you really love to drive, it's the only way to go. Named after its feature prominent mode of transport, Stingray is the epitome of 1970s exploitation at its finest. Alternatively known as Abigail Wanted, Stingray was written and directed by former college film professor Richard Taylor, who had intended it to be an independent production until it gained the attention of Hollywood producers, who would further back the project and got Taylor to cast some well-known B-movie stars to complete the film. Playing out as a type of high gone wrong tale of two friends who buy a second-hand Corvette that was used to hide a group of criminals stolen money and narcotics, the film becomes a chase to catch the car and the two unsuspecting men within it. Choosing the title vehicle present as a cherry red 1964 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray C2 convertible with a 327 cubic inch 300 horsepower V8 engine and one of the best produced sports cars America's ever manufactured. Being pursued by the gang in a 1971 Chevrolet Chevelle Malibu with several jokes being made about its lack of handling and power compared to the Stingray and even at one point being referred to as a four cylinder when in fact the Malibu was never available in this option. The Chevelle did come out with a base model six cylinder 250 cubic inch with 145 horsepower Several incredible chases take place within the film, once again assisted by veteran stunt legend Kerry Lofton in the role of stunt coordinator. Presented as a dark comedy, Stingray has been recently given its time in the spotlight once more, where after decades of thought to be lost, an original uncut R-rated 35mm print of the film was found in director Richard Taylor's garage, and has since been released on Blu-ray in 2019 in celebration of its 40-year anniversary. When we get where we're going, I'm not slowing down or stopping for anything. A lighthearted tale that deserves better recognition, Corvette Summer was the follow-up for the then high-in-demand Mark Hamill, fresh off his Star Wars fame, who was mobbed on set by young fans who once word had gotten out Luke Skywalker was in town would rush over to meet him. Hamill wanted this film to try and break him away from being typecast as a clean-cut farm boy character that was starting to take over his career and role offers. The title, though disliked by Hamill at the time, was representative of the custom 1973 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray featured throughout the film. The story picks up on a high school teen, finding and obsessing over a Corvette C3 he and his fellow classmates find in a scrapyard for a shop project they are looking to restore with their teacher. Becoming attached with it over everything else in his life, Hamill's character of Kenny is crushed when after its first night out on the town, the car is stolen off the street. He then discovers the car has been spotted in Las Vegas, where he goes and befriends would-be prostitute Vanessa, played by Annie Potts in a first feature-length starring role. Unique in its appearance, as it reflected many of the custom conversions going on at the time in 1970s America to older muscle cars the youth were obtaining, the Corvette Stingray was equipped with a right-hand drive steering column and a fiberglass custom mold front end. Built by Dick Corks of Corky's Custom Studios, two Corvettes were built for the film, one a hero car for close-ups and the other a stunt model, the second of which was to find its way into private hands in Australia after the film came out. Seen in the film come its third act go up against a 1971 Pontiac Trans Am, where some would argue a Formula 400. A wonderful chase takes place in the Mojave Desert between the Stingray and Firebird, adding that extra touch to an already enjoyable movie. The film combines a unique blend of humor and action, and successfully delivers in the entertainment department, and is an easy watch time and again. End of the line, folks. Stop! 
you'll kill us. I can't stop. Bill have reported the petrol. To hell with the petrol. He'll have reported the car by now. Look at the stolen car. Well, sort of. A 1981 film that hails from New Zealand. During a time where movies made there were few and far between compared to their Australian neighbours, Goodbye Pork Pie begins with a random encounter where a wandering about young man named Jerry comes across a purse dropped in front of him. He then decides to use his newfound money and ID to rent a car and go off driving to wherever the road may take him. After a random encounter with the character of John, who has just broken up with his longtime girlfriend, who he is looking to visit a thousand miles away to try and get her back, both he and Jerry cross paths and drive off in the now reported stolen car, eventually picking up a female hitchhiker along the way named Cheryl. A 1978 yellow Mini 1000 Mark IV takes center stage of this story, though being only 38 brake horsepower, which at times makes it going head to head with Holden V8 police vehicles a stretch of suspension of disbelief. Regardless of this power mismatch, much like the original Italian job, the Mini which is said 3 was supplied to the production by the New Zealand Motor Corporation makes up for this lack of power through its nimble size and evasion of the law by any means possible. Starting off as an almost aimless journey, the three passengers decide to drive off as far as they can go, selling off parts of the Mini for cash and weed along the way until it becomes a quest for the character of John, played by Tony Barry, to win back his former girlfriend. The film is tightly packed and fast paced, and with enough fun and antics that it is indeed a lost gem of a story and a New Zealand classic. So much so that in 2017, a remake titled Pork Pie was produced and would be directed by Matt Murphy, who was the son of the original film's director Jeff Murphy, who had gone on to direct other well-known Hollywood films and become a second unit director for the Lord of the Rings trilogy. All this thanks to a lot of help from a little car chase film called Goodbye Pork Pie. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like, subscribe and bell icon in order to help this channel grow and to bring you more content like this one as your support is what keeps this channel going.